to our Praxis video review on discrete mathematics. This is for the Praxis 2. It's uh, relating to the, I think it's the 0661 math content test. And um, we're going to show some examples of discrete math type problems uh, that appear on, on this test. So up here, we have a, a pretty typical question talks about reflexive, symmetric, and, and transitive properties, and they give us a scenario. So the scenario is that on the set of n by n matrices, so we should just set up a simple example, right? So it's n by n, so 2 by 2 or, or 3 by 3 or whatever. And um, this is the relation is conformable for multiplication, satisfies which of the, the following properties. So if we, let's just break this down, if we have one n by n set, then over here, this also needs to be the same size, right? Another matrix, n by n, right? Because if, if the first one's 2 by 2, that's n by n. The second one also has to be 2 by 2. If the first one was 3 by 3, then the second one would have to be 3 by 3. Um, so, so no matter how we set this up, we've got two matrices of the exact same size and it is important here that they're n by n and we'll talk about that in a little bit um, anyway so we say conformable for for multiplication in matrix multiplication we can translate that into that the multiplication works like it actually is possible to do the multiplication so so what I mean here is that um, this row Right? When you multiply this row, you're multiplying it by the column here in this matrix. Right? And that will give you the first value of, let's call it A, of our new matrix. And then to get the next value, we take this, this row again and multiply it by this column here. And that gives us this value B. And then we take the bottom row right, and multiply it by this column. And that gives us C and then do the same thing here by this column that gives us D so when we multiply we take these rows multiply them by these columns so when we write that down it's rows times columns same thing here just on a, a little bit larger of a scale and I just I should fix one thing there should be another row of n's in here right it's an n by n matrix so I take this row and I multiply it by this column, right? That will give me the first value A in our matrix, and then we keep going. This row by this column, and then this column, we get B and C, and this just keeps going. Now, these matrices, matrices are conformable with each other. Why? Because the number of columns here matches the number of rows here. Let me show you what I mean as a counter example. So in this example we had n by n matrix, a 2 by 2 matrix, by another 2 by 2 matrix. And in order for this row to be able to be multiplied by this column, this column has to have as many rows as there are columns in the first one. And that makes sense, right? This letter n has to match with this letter. And this letter n has to match with that letter. And the only way that can happen is if these if these two rows exist for these two columns. And an example of a non a non-conformable, right, is essentially if they don't really fit with each other. So for example, if I had let me just write this in now, A and B. Fix this, sorry. I'm gonna try to get rid of the all these ends. It might be too many ends. If we had A and B and C, right? D, E, F. So this is in a 3 by 2 matrix, or an N by M. So the, the, the columns and rows have different sizes. And here, let's say I have a 2 by 2 G, H, I, J matrix. Why, why is this a problem? Well, again, when we're multiplying, we're taking a different color. This row right here, A, B, C and multiplying it by the first column, but notice that the second matrix, right, the second matrix only has two rows. 
but this first matrix has three columns. So what is this C going to be multiplied by, right? There's no number here to multiply it by. I guess we could add zeros down there, but it's still non-conformable in the sense that these matrices don't really fit with each other. And um, another way of looking at it is if we had a similar scenario. If I had A, B, C, D, right? And then here in this, in this next example, I had a, a, a larger matrix. Let's just label, uh, we'll go, um, sorry, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, let's go to the alphabet here, and O, P. Well, what, what's the issue here? Well, again, now we have A, B, two columns times three rows. Well, well, how does A and B match up to these three values, right? These are non-conformable matrices. Okay, well, what does that mean about... <laughs> about this problem, conformable, I think I'm spelling it right. Well, so if they are conformable with each other, we want to know which of these properties actually work. Okay, well, reflexive means, and I think we'll talk a, a little bit more about this in other videos, but basically, and, and they give us this, that reflexive just means um, that the, the function or whatever maps onto itself and so, so every element is related to itself. So in other words, um, if we have one n by n matrice, so and let's label it one, two, three, four, and we have another one, right? B, let's say, and it's five, six, seven, eight. We know they're both two by two matrices, and I can I can multiply this one by by five, six, seven, eight. But could I multiply one, two, three, four? I can, oops put that back up. We're not ready for this problem yet. What could I, could I multiply? Reflexive just means, could I take this matrix, one, two, three, four, and let's call it matrix A. Could I multiply A by itself? Could I do that? The answer, yeah, is yes. Right? A two by two matrix is going to be reflexive upon itself. So, it is definitely reflexive. And I, I think I'll talk a little bit more about why it makes sense in, in general, but other scenarios are for, reflective, for reflexitivity are when, when a function is equal to itself, like the number 2 equals itself, um, and so forth. Those are other examples of reflexive, reflexive groups, uh, reflexive properties. Symmetric, well, what does that mean? Well, it, basically what it means is that I can take, if I have, see, if I have a matrix A, and I'm multiplying it by B, can I also do B times B times A, right? And the answer is yes. If you think about matrix A as 1, 2, 3, 4 times B, right? 5, 6, 7, 8. It's not saying it's giving us the same answer. It just says that we can actually do that. We can, if, if we can multiply A by B, can we also multiply B by A? Well, yeah, the answer is yes, right? If we just flip this around, the answer might change, but we can actually do the multiplication, right? They're conformable with each other. These rows and columns actually match up. And then last, last we have the, the transitive property. And transitive property, although I don't have to really define it here, if, if we just say basically that A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Uh, but we're not looking at equality here. We're looking at conformable multiplication. So in other words, if I have three matrices, A, which is a 2 by 2 matrix, and B, which is a 2 by 2 matrix, let's label this as matrices, right? 2 by 2, and C is a 2 by 2 matrix, because we're all dealing with n by n matrices. Well, if I know that I can multiply A to B, and I know I can multiply B to C, doesn't that also mean I can multiply A to C, right? Because they're all two by two matrices. So if A is conformable to B and B is conformable to C, A is conformable to C. So in, the, in this problem, um, the conformable for multiplication property actually satisfies all of these properties. It's reflexive, it's symmetric, and it's transitive. Okay, hope that helped.